we're going to use the washer method to determine the volume of the solid formed when the region bounded by y equals the square root of x and y equals x to the fourth is rotated about the y-axis over the closed interval from zero to one for x. Because we have rotation about the y-axis, we'll be using this formula here to determine the volume. Where the volume equals pi times the integral from c to d of the square root of big R of y minus the square root of little r of y integrated with respect to y. Where big R of y is the outer radius and little r of y is the inner radius. And because we're integrating with respect to y, notice how both the inner radius and outer radius must be expressed as functions of y. Let's first look at the bounded region over this closed interval and then determine the solid that would be formed when rotating about the y-axis. The green graph is y equals x to the fourth and the blue graph is y equals the square root of x. Notice how the two graphs intersect at the point zero comma zero, the origin, as well as the point one comma one. So the yellow region is the bounded region and we're going to rotate this region about the y-axis here, which would form this solid here on the right. So our goal is to find the volume of this solid using the washer method. Notice how when x is on the closed interval from zero to one, y would also be the closed interval from zero to one. And that's important because remember, we are going to integrate with respect to y. Now to help us set up our integral, it's always helpful to sketch a representative rectangle, which is this red rectangle here, when using the disk or washer method, the represented rectangle will always be perpendicular to the axis of rotation. Notice how this rectangle is perpendicular to the y-axis. We call this the represented rectangle because if we rotate this about the y-axis, it would give us one washer of volume of the solid shown on the right. Now let's determine big R of y and little r of y. Again, big R of y would be the outer radius. So using our rectangle, that would be the horizontal distance from the y-axis to the corresponding point on the green graph, y equals x to the fourth. So this horizontal distance here would be big R of y. And then little r of y would be the inner radius, which would be the distance from the y-axis to the corresponding point on the blue function given by y equals the square root of x. And therefore this distance here would be little r of y. So because these are horizontal distances, or x distances, we'll have to solve both of these equations for x in order to find big R of y and little r of y. Let's first find big R of y, which again is controlled by the function y equals x to the fourth. So if y equals x to the fourth, we can solve this for x by taking the fourth root of both sides of the equation, or take the one-fourth power of both sides. So x is equal to y raised to the power of one-fourth, so this horizontal distance controlled by y equals x to the fourth is big R of y equals y to the one fourth. Now little r of y is controlled by y equals the square root of x. Here if we square both sides of the equation, we can say x equals y squared, which means this horizontal distance controlled by y equals the square root of x would be the function little r of y equals y squared. Now we have all the information we need in order to find this volume. We would have the volume equals pi times the integral from zero to one, remember along the y-axis, because we're integrating with respect to y, of the square of big R of y would be y to the one-fourth squared minus the square of little r of y, which would be y squared squared dy. Now that we have our integral, let's evaluate this on the previous slide. We have pi times the integral from zero to one of y to the one-fourth squared would be y to the two-fourth or y to the one-half minus y to the second squared would be y to the fourth. Now let's find the antiderivative. The integral of y to the one-half would be y to the three-halves divided by three-halves, or two-thirds, y to the three-halves, and then minus the integral of y to the fourth would be y to the fifth divided by five, or minus one-fifth y to the fifth. Now we need to find big F of B minus big F of A. So when y equals one, we have two-thirds times one to the three-halves 
minus one fifth times one to the fifth, and then when y is zero, both terms have to be zero. So we have pi times, this just be two thirds minus one fifth. The common denominator here would be 15. Multiply two thirds by five over five, and multiply one fifth by three over three. So here we have 10 fifteenths minus three fifteenths. So we have seven fifteenths times pi, or seven pi divided by 15. This is volume, so it would be cubic units. Let's also get a decimal approximation. Seven pi divided by 15 is approximately 1.4661 cubic units. So here we have the exact volume and the approximate volume of the solid shown here formed by rotating this yellow region about the y-axis. I hope you found this helpful.